Polar graphs can get kind of crazy, um, but the reality is there are a number of graphs in polar that are that are pretty basic and pretty straightforward. Um, and so there are going to be a handful of them that I'll expect you to sort of memorize the, the shape of the graph and the orientation of the graph just based on the equation. And so this video is going to sort of be about, about the ones that I do expect you to have memorized. So the first category of graph that I expect you to have memorized are, are the graphs of circles, right? So there, there are sort of two of them. Um, first, if you have r equals a constant times cosine theta, um, that will be a circle of diameter a. Um, and the deal is that this is going to be set to the right of the y-axis if a is greater than 0, and set to the left of the y-axis if a is less than 0. So, you know, if, if, if a is greater than 0, you're going to have a circle sitting over here. If a is less than 0, you'll have a circle that's over here, right? So it's it's either to the right or to the left of the, of the x-axis, again, with the idea that a, um, you know, where I suppose here, negative a, sort of gives the, the diameter of the circle. Um, the other thing to say is that in order to draw one cycle of the circle completely, you only need to go between 0 and pi for your theta values. Um, and I'm going to talk about where 0 and theta are in the next slide, um, but it's important that we know when we draw these, you know, what point does 0 give us? What point does pi give us? Like, where, where does this circle start and stop? Um, and what orientation does it have? So similarly, if, if we have r equals a times sine theta, you're going to get, a, again, a circle of diameter a. Um, it'll be above the x-axis if a is greater than 0. So you'll have a circle like this. Um, and if it's uh, if a is, is less than 0, if a is negative, we'll have a circle that sits below the x-axis with the same deal. Um, a is the diameter, or this one would go all the way down to negative a. Um, as before, this graph is drawn completely on the interval between 0 and pi. So we need to memorize that, that a cosine theta gives us a, a circle of diameter a that's, and the way that I think about it is these ones are both cut by the x-axis, and cosine theta has sort of an x feel to it. Um, similarly with sine, sine is cut by the y-axis, those circles are cut by the y-axis, and sine has a y feel to it. So I have one example here for us. So I want to sketch the graph of r equals negative 10 cosine theta. And in the graph, I want to indicate their orientation as theta ranges from 0 to pi. And I'm going to throw one other thing in there as well. So pause the video. Um, you know, it should be an easy thing for you to do based on the last slide. So go ahead and, and graph that, or sketch this graph. So this is negative 10 cosine theta. It's a cosine graph, which means it's, um, it's sort of going to be cut by the x-axis. I'm going to have a circle that's on the left. That's not a bad circle. Uh, we sort of have negative 5 here in the middle, um, and the graph ends over here at negative 10. Right? Now, one of the pieces that's important is when you draw this thing, what's the orientation? Um, or maybe another way of thinking about that is like, wh where is theta 0? You know, where is theta, you know, pi over 2? Like, wh where... Where does this function hit specific values? And so what, what I personally do in these problems is I'll actually, even without a calculator, we'll sort of mentally test a few values, right? So, for instance, suppose that I have theta being 0, right? I'll think about what is negative 10 times the cosine of 0. I think the cosine of 0 is 1, so negative 10 times 1 is negative 10. Okay, so, so when theta is 0, so when I'm pointing this direction... My, my r value is negative 10, so I'm going all the way back to here. So that's effectively where the graph starts. Now I have to figure out, does the graph go upward, or does it go downward from there? And so part of what I'll do there is I will just mentally think about an, another smaller number, and I don't think that it's necessary that we... I don't think it's necessary that you plug something in specific like pi over 6, although you certainly could. Um, I'll, I'll sort of show it with both methods. Suppose I said here that theta was going to be a positive small number, right? If I were to plug in a positive small number to theta, I would get negative 10 times the cosine of that positive small number. Well, if we imagine, like on the unit circle, the positive small number being plugged into cosine, I'm, I'm going to get a positive number, right? This is going to be a positive number that's actually close to 1. Close to 1, but less than 1. When I multiply these two things together, I'm going to get a negative value, right? So if I imagine here I am at my small 
theta value. I'm multiplying negative 10 times something less than 1. I'm going to get a negative value, and that's going to bounce me back to here. That information right there is enough for me to understand, hey, the orientation of this graph is going this way. Right? If I wanted to, you know, I, I could have used a specific value. I could have said, hey, when theta is pi over 6, I'm going to get negative 10 times the cosine of pi over 6. Well, that's negative 10 times root 3 over 2, which gives me negative 5 root 3. Clearly a negative value. When I'm following an angle of pi over 6, I'll have this negative value. Right? Now we sort of have to imagine, like, okay, how long does it take for the graph to, to complete itself? And so to do that, we might, we might actually test out some other values and see if we can see what's happening. Um, and the more you do these things, the more it goes really fast. I know this particular example is taking a long time. What if I just pick another value, like theta equals pi over 2? Right? This will be negative 10 times the cosine of pi over 2, which is 0. So when I'm at an angle of pi over 2, my radius is 0. So that's when I get to there. So we sort of have this picture of, huh, this must be where 0 is. This is probably where pi over 4 is. This up here seems like pi over 2. And if I sort of follow this logic, follow this, this patterning around, more than likely this point up top is 3 pi over 4, and you could even sort of imagine that, right? Like imagine the angle of pi over 4, I'm sorry, 3 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4 is sort of going this way. Notice that that point right there is being pointed at by 3 pi over 4, right? And then finally when we come back around here, this value is probably going to be pi, right? Because we could be pointing at that and get to that value. And we can sort of confirm that thought by actually evaluating this thing for pi. If I use theta being pi, um, that'll give me negative 10 times the cosine of pi. That's negative 10 times negative 1, which is 10. So sure enough, that's saying if I point in the direction of pi and go 10 units, I'll end up back there. So w when we do these polar graphs, it's going to be important that we can not only, you know, figure out what the graph looks like, but also sort of understand it's going this way. And as it's going that way, I have some sense of what the values are and, and where the graph is when I'm hitting certain values of theta. Okay? So, yay, we got that graph. took a long time. Um, they, these get a lot faster as you get practiced with them. These other two memorized example and memorized graphs are, are actually significantly faster. Um, if, if you have r equals a times secant theta, it's a vertical line at x equals a. And if you have r equals a times cosecant theta, it's a horizontal line at y equals a. Um, and, th and there's actually a lot of reasoning for that. If you take this thing and, and just think for a minute, r equals a secant theta is the same as r times 1 over cosine theta. And so if you were to multiply that cosine theta over, you'd have r cosine theta equals a. And we remember that r cosine theta is x. And so it's actually a very quick step. Uh, or I guess few steps, that gets us to the idea that r, e r equals a secant theta is the same as x equals a. So, I, you know, these are sort of a combination of memorize slash know that you can very quickly convert the forms of these things. So if we took one quick example of this, if I asked you to graph r equals negative 3 cosecant theta, you're either going to have the fact memorized that that's y equals 3, I'm sorry, y equals negative 3, and the graph therefore looks like this. Or I'm going to expect that you can look at this and say, well, I know that that's going to be negative 3 over sine theta. That would be r sine theta equals negative 3, and that means that y equals negative 3. Whether you have this one directly memorized or know that you can follow the steps to get there, in this case, it's pretty fast. You just need to know that when the graphs look like this, that's what we can do with them. So there are other graphs that it's nice to have memorized, but I consider these four equations and these four graphs to be, to be quite necessary for some basic problems on the AP exam.